They're guys. They do magic. magic. They are the magic guys. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are back with the magic guys, and it's Christmas, which means we'll be Carolyn. Carolyn. <laughs> oh boy! We're back. Jingle bells. Josh smells. Josh is an elf. I'm Santa Claus. I look great as Santa Claus, by the way. You do. I'm it's, like it suits you. I'm like Santa Claus in his twenties. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> it's been in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, come on. Putting the shrimp on the Barbie. Putting the shrimp on the Barbie. We're back for the week of Christmas, but we don't want to leave you guys hanging with your presence, eargasm content. So we've brought you our podcast for the week. And we're in style. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see our elf and Santa hat. If you're listening to this on uh, Spotify or iTunes or any of those other platforms, just know I look fantastic in a Santa hat. Because every Santa has a watermelon shirt. Yeah, they do. Yeah, baby. You know, you got to. No, they do. You want to come at me, bro? Definitely not. I'm Santa Claus, man. I will put you on the naughty list. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Naughty boy. Oh anyway, boy. all right. So <laughs> enough weirdness, enough uh, messing around. Let's get straight into the nitty gritty of it all. Josh had something really interesting that he wanted to talk about. And uh, so I'm just going to pass it. Josh, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I love how you're putting me on the spot. But I will run with it. I think now that we're at our, is this our fourth podcast? This is number four. This yeah. is number four. Yeah. Like now it's legit. Like if you in life do something more than three times, it's no longer a fluke. It's a skill. So does that mean now that... We've this already mastered it. We should quit. Yeah. Is I it think a we legit... quit while we're ahead. Yeah. What's the number of podcasts you have to get to before it's like a, a real thing? Okay. So I've always been a believer of you have to do a hundred shit shows before you do a good one. So we still got 96 to go. So hang in there, everyone. The <laughs> good stuff is coming. Yeah, yeah, give us uh, give us 96 more. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's the week How of Christmas. Years? That's two years. It gives us, uh, yeah, yeah. Two mm. years of, of, of shitty content Great. to eventually be the best you know i had a thought and i didn't even mention this to jason beforehand i love the idea of the community of the listeners getting involved with our podcast and something i have seen done before and i thought we could do this in our own way is for people to actually email us voice recordings that we can insert into the podcast so jason is going to ignore me while i go on and talk no, about i'm this. just getting questions ready. but here's what i thought here's what i here's what i thought would be cool you tell me what you think i'm li okay i I'm think ready. what would be cool is if people emailed us their voice recording for us to play in the podcast and it can be a question or it can be telling us what you're up to um for example if we had done this for christmas you could tell us what you're doing for christmas you know so i think it'd be really cool that way we can interact in real time answer your questions and that way, I think we can be a bit more organic with, um, you know, what we're talking about. And you guys can get involved. I mean, it would be as simple as we've set up an email address for the podcast, by the way. I'll put the link below if you're watching visually, but I'll just say it. It's themagicguysshow at gmail.com. Email us, upload a voice recording, and we might use it in uh, future videos. But, you know, what do you think? Oh my! <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jackie, you says it to go. No, so, I like it. Well, I think that'll be fun. Before we get stuck into all that, because obviously we don't have any voice recordings yet, they are to come. Mm. So, Josh, what was that other thing you wanted to talk about? Oh, dude, I just started riffing, hoping that you would forget about that. No, no, no. I don't, I don't stuff, forget you know? things. I don't, I don't forget things. Ooh. All right, let's talk about this. What is your favorite magic effect to perform? And what is your favorite magic effect to watch that you don't perform for whatever reason? Okay, my favorite magic effect to perform is the cups and balls. For those of you that don't know, this is the oldest recorded trick in history aside from pulling a head off a goose. True story. Great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I love that trick. It's just great. The reason why I love it is because it has so many elements to it. You can do, you can literally incorporate things like mentalism into it. It has great sleight of hand, visual stuff. It has... Uh, you know, disappearance, vanishes, appearance. It has uh, productions. It has all kinds of things. It's literally everything involving magic. It's, it's a part of the cups and balls. That's Can why I, I love ask, it. How do you add mentalism into cups and balls? I'm just genuinely curious. Well, you can literally like predict the cup that they'll pick, for example. How? Well, what do you want me to do? Teach you on the channel? Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Do you say, I knew you were going to pick two before you said it? Boom. Like, how do you, you, can put, you know what I mean? You can produce predictions from the cups. You can have the cups so on the inside of the cup you can have a prediction there's a multiple outs routine you can do with cups 
Does anyone else smell bullshit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's I'm true. It's but, true. No, but to your point, it involves so many different elements. Okay, keep going. So that, this is a great answer, by the way. <laughs> so Thanks, bro. I appreciate perform, that. And what's your favorite effect that you love watching that you don't perform, whether because you haven't learned it or you don't know how to do it or it's just not your style, whatever. Like, what is the thing you love watching? The silhouette flag rose by uh, Tello. Oh yeah, that one there. The that, rose. That, that's probably my favorite the one. The shadow watch. rose or whatever, whatever it's, it's called. I think it's called the silo, the rose silhouette or something. I can't remember. Brilliant. But he basically, oh yeah, he basically cuts the shadow and the roses, the rose petals fall, and so it's really, it's really great. And yeah. uh, it's, it's probably the most magical, visual magical thing I've ever seen. That's beautiful. Yeah. But obviously, I don't perform it because one, I have no fucking idea how it's done, and two, uh, because I have no idea how it's done. That's a great answer. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful to watch, it and even yeah, yeah, like even if you were to come up with a method yourself to do it, it you don't care. Like you enough just putting me in the spotlight there, Josh. What is your favorite <laughs> trick to well, perform and to watch? Well, Santa, should I sit on your knee like Santa would? No, no, it's no, only good it's kids way too hot here in summer. That's, That's the though. thing in Australia is we have Christmas in summer. And that is so weird for some people in the US and Canada and stuff where it's snowing. Man, it's hot. It is hot. I'm talking it's uncomfortable. Hot. Like, you know when you you know when people get nervous and they get flop sweat? I'm not even nervous. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and we can smell each other right uh, now. That's no, what we can. No, that's all you. Oh, I can just smell you then. Oh, that's great. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a... Merry <laughs> Jason. Anyway, so, so, so stop beating around the bush here, Josh, the proverbial bush. I need right. you to climb out of that bush and give us a solid answer. Does anyone else think that he's been a little bit pushy today? <laughs> 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 it's because of how stressed he is. He's going to have to deliver all these presents soon to many good boys and girls. Do you know how hard it is to fly a sleigh? First of all, just think of the logistics alone. I have eight deers on the front of a sleigh... And I have to fly from country to country and give presents to boys and girls. And eat cookies and drink milk at every house. How the hell am I going to fly with a sleigh and six reindeer? Really strong thread. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so, get, get, answer your question. To All right, cool. So my favorite effect to perform, if I was pressed and told to pick one... I think it's the thing that I do to open almost every stage show because of the feeling I felt when I first saw it. And that is to produce a large glass bottle, bottled glass wine. Bottle, wow. bottle of wine. Yeah, wow, guess, that's yeah. how enthusiastic I am about it. So you can, you can also tell that he doesn't practice much. So, but that's fine. You know, it's corporate guys for you, I guess. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> My favorite effect to perform is to produce a bottle of wine out of nowhere seemingly right in front of your eyes and the reason is because when i first saw it it was a real astonishment moment for me it's a very quick thing but it for me it's awesome so any chance i get i will do that there's great effects i love doing roving magic but that for me is just i love to pass you know that what? feeling onto people it's a great trick too and i remember learning that one as well I think we learned it about the same time, actually. Probably. But yeah. I also remember the guy that came up with it coming in and doing a lecture in Brisbane. Hell yeah. And he fooled the pants off all of us. Totally. Because we all knew the trick because we studied it, right? Mm. But he didn't just produce one. He produced two bottles and then both of his shoes. <laughs> yeah, this guy was amazing. It was amazing. Amazing. So that's my favorite effect to, to perform because I love passing that feeling on to people. The effect that I love to watch um, the answer you gave is great. Uh, so the cups and balls. When yeah, I, I was younger. I, I like watching that too. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, the cups and balls. I mean, that's a topic of its own, isn't it? But the effect I love watching. So a few years ago, probably like six years ago now, I was fortunate to um, just like work um, in, the, uh, in the merchandise section of the Illusionist touring show. So illusionists from all around the world like the top performers from each country came together did a show and because i was like helping out selling the show bags i got to watch the show for 10 days straight like two shows a night for 10 days and the routines that stood out to me the most that i would look forward to seeing every time was number one yuho jin fism uh, winner carb manipulator yeah that guy was good he has like the most you know, Shin Lim is another version, another great example, but he has like the most beautiful card manipulation act to like a really symphony, symphonic tune. And then the other act that I really love watching was a guy named Aaron Crow. 
And he did an act with a bow and arrow shooting into an apple that had uh, yeah. a uh, wedding ring on it that shot out of the apple that they're holding on. There's so much happening. But even though it's like a really uh, skill-based uh, technical demonstration, it ends with the guy on one knee like putting the ring back onto this lady's finger. And it's such a romantic moment that like I just love watching that and seeing the audience like being like oh you know like nothing nothing gets a crowd more excited than a guy firing a bow blindfolded straight at an <laughs> apple that's being held by a woman while spinning around too like yeah he's spinning around he has, yeah. it on the, he has the laser pointer on too so you get yeah. this cool aesthetic of the laser going around it, the room and then it's it just... amazing aaron crow you can find that act he did it on britain's got talent and america's got talent but I, i'm telling you when you see it live it's just the electricity in the room is awesome so those two routines stand out because i got to keep watching them they're awesome that's great, man. Those are really good answers. Now, let me tell you why you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> because <there's... laughs> the cops and balls are no, mentalist that, routines. That's great. Well, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go into something else here. In all of magic, there are a few different categories. You've got mm. like your visual magic, your storytelling, all that sort of stuff. And then you've got like mentalism, whatever. So you've got <laughs> I love people, you just basic, throw it off. <laughs> well, you've got people with skill and then you've got mentalists. So, my <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think mentalism is amazing. But... I do find that a lot of them can't do many good card tricks. Because they're not meant to. Yeah. But still, anyway, besides that, what do you think is the most impactful magic trick? Now, even though I was dogging on mentalism, I actually think mentalism is the most impactful magic that you can do. You know what I mean? Here's what I think. My brother. My, my brother. brother. From an another Santa mother. Brother. I think... If you are performing to people who don't speak your language, it's a beautiful thing that it can transcend and break that language barrier, right? Which would be like visual magic. So visual magic is so good because you can literally perform, or a silent act, I should say, can perform anywhere in the world. That That's so good. But I think you're right, especially for adults, which is what I spend a lot of my, almost all my time performing to, mentalism has that really crazy effect because... First of all, it's really pers like if you're reading someone's mind, yeah. that's so personal to them as opposed to a card trick. And I think that people remember that and it um, feels like real magic. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think agree. you're right. You know, yeah. I, think I think mentalism is meant I'm glad we agree on something here. Put it there, bro. Boom. Mm. So now, what's your favorite mentalism effect to perform? Oh, hey, here we go. Straight into it. Oh, boy. Oh boy! Mine is actually uh, reading a thought of name, so, so someone thinks of someone they know or care yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, that's you, so strong. You can divine that from them. That's and truthfully, yeah. in, and as powerful as that trick is, I think it's actually like the only one <laughs> that I know of that caliber. That's yeah. I can do like some things, like I can touch someone through a phone. That sounds freaking really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you but, can make uh, someone feel something, even though you're nowhere near them. That's that what you're saying. Sounds well wrong. Yeah, we but learn yeah, how to touch people from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I can, like, have the phone pointed at someone. I could touch, like, their shoulder, for example, on the phone, and the person who's 10 meters away could feel that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that, that sort of stuff is, like, super powerful as well. But this, And the funny thing is, too, is I am not a mentalist, but I can still do these ones, and those ones, they get some real powerful reactions. Yeah, like, well, I think with mentalism, if we're talking about mind reading specifically... The thing you have to be to be a good mentalist is you have to be creative in how you reveal the information or what information yeah. you're getting. So that's probably the most direct, strongest way. And then what mentalists would do if they're doing a whole show is they would find really creative and visual textured ways to continue doing that, but in different, different. Um, so it seems like different effects rather. So I think being able to read someone's mind and tell them what the person is they're thinking of is so strong. It doesn't get any stronger than that. But I think the one thing that could maybe rival it is being able to define someone's pin code, you know, on their phone. That's some information that is like the most secretive and important thing. And if you can unlock someone's phone, you have access to everything in their life. So I've noticed, especially with the school formal events I was doing in the last few months, I could do the best magic I could do. But then if I do some mentalism and unlock their phone, they freak out, completely <laughs> freak out. So mentalism... Although he mocked it, we love it. I actually do love mentalism. Yeah, I do like it. Please don't kill us, Darren Brown. Oh, no. Darren Brown is the pinnacle. Like, he's the, he is, in fact, the benchmark, mm. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's like, uh, 
there's a lot of people that learn basic mentalism they kind of trivialize it i guess you could say if that makes sense okay does that make sense continue keep going trivialize it you know like you could learn for example like learning how to divine someone's thought of name or their pin code or something like that is a really powerful moment Mm -hmm. but then there are people who learn these things like they don't learn how to perform it yeah 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 and they just kind of like trivialize it or they they could even accidentally expose the the magic okay yeah great yeah, I mean that, and that's with any any of those forms of magic we're talking about. Like, if you don't learn how to perform it, then what are you doing? So, you know what's real magic? The cups and balls. So, Josh, do you know how to use the cups and balls? Fuck no. And that's why I'm better. I don't actually know the cups and balls as a r- routine in full. I love watching it, but I I know it's a good skill and base <laughs> to have, but I don't do it, and I've never needed to do it. You know what's funny is like a. Uh, Seven years ago, eight years ago, I gave Josh a set of cups. Mm. What happened to those? You still got them? No, I used them to drink out of, and eventually, really? like, yeah, <laughs> it just became. Uh, and I would put my pens in them and stuff, like, uh, like on my desk. <laughs> that was the use I could get from it. My U day wooden cups. No, yeah. <laughs> you drank out of wooden cups. Mm-hmm. That's not good. It was weird. Mm. They didn't last long. I didn't think they would. No, that's very upsetting news. But that doesn't matter because it's Christmas. And you've got me a new set of cups for Christmas, right? What'd you get me, Josh? Well, it's not really Christmas because we're recording this, you know, before Christmas. Yeah, right. No, no, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. What are you getting? Yeah. Look, I think uh, it's time for Jason now to tell us about his important pressing topic. He has been just dying to let out. I have been dying to let it out. This is is something that I've been thinking about for a little while now. Tell us. And that is, what are you going to get me for Christmas? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no in all seriousness though let's let's actually talk about something <clears throat> that'd be great that's why they're still Shut listening up, Josh. this is what we want to talk about how do you handle hecklers i think this is something that people would really like to know so for example there are a few different ways to handle hecklers let's let's uh, list off a few right here you could heckle them back probably not the best way to do it but you could you can play the sympathy card where you turn the crowd on them this is also not good i don't think there was this saying, actually, where if you uh, attack a member of your audience, let's say he's being a dick, I don't know what, but if mm. you then attack him, your entire audience can feel attacked by that because they're, you know, it's a collective performance. True. Right? Yep. And so, so what do you think the best way to handle a heckle is? Are we talking show or are we talking roving? Roving's easy. Roving's easy. You just... You know, because you're working for a small group of people. If, if he's dick, enough of a dick, he can go to the next group. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But on, I'm talking a show. You're on stage. You've got uh, 7,000 people. No, you've, you've got, you know, you've three or 400 people watching you or whatever. Okay. You're on stage and you're, and you're on the spot. Someone's like, you know, you're doing a trick. You just, you just produce the bottle of wine and someone shouts out, when's the magic start? Yep. Yep. Right. I've had, yeah, I mean, I can remember a few times where I've had heckles like they were pretty brutal at the time <laughs> it felt. Mm-hmm. Like I've literally been doing an effect and again, like I'd mentioned in previous podcasts, like Christmas time just brings out the drunken people. So I'm doing a routine and someone's like, this is shit. Like they, <laughs> like they just said it because they're so oblivious and drunk and they think they're saying it to their friend, but like I can obviously directly hear them. And I learned a lesson then because I was trying to do this effect that was quite procedural and they probably did think it was shit because the magic moment hadn't happened. And then once it did happen, Everyone was impressed and, and they didn't say that anymore. But in that instance, for example, I ignored them and kept going. Okay. And then they didn't say anything else. I think you have to know when to pick your fights because sometimes you can just leave it and they'll just know, okay, if I heckle, he's not going to respond. That's boring now. I'm not going to say anything. But okay. sometimes it's obviously called for. I, I definitely like to take the aggressive approach. Like a heckle I had, which was indirect heckling, was someone's phone rang with a video call. And I think you were at that show. Huh. I was in a parlor yeah. show, which is so intimate. There's only 30 people in this room. And the front row, five minutes into the show starting, their phone starts ringing at full volume. And I can see it's a video call because it's making that sound that Facebook does. You know, it's, it's going, whatever it is. And at that moment, I'm like, I have to address it at some in some way. So I pick up the phone and I answer it <laughs> and just make that person a part of the show. I, I get them to say hello to everyone. 
and I give them back their phone. And that just lets everyone know, like, if your phone rings, I'm going to answer it. So that was like an indirect heckle. But I think you just got to roll with it. Um, but to answer your question a bit more simply, like if someone just shouts out something, I'll usually have a few pre ready to go lines that I'll throw out there at them. And I never really like have a go at them to the point where everyone's like booing them or whatever. Like comics are great at that, like <laughs> ripping on them. Right. Um, and then if they're heckling me, but they're on stage, then I will just manage them in a way that like their heckling will actually work to my favor and fool them even more, you know, and people will just think, wow, we've ne that show never happens like that, but we got to see it in this really unique way because that guy was being really difficult, you know? Yeah. How do you handle hecklers? Well, there's, yours there's are... two ways. There's two ways. So I, if I'm at a gig yeah. and I'm doing a show, it's a sim similar approach to yours. I try to keep it super friendly and blah, blah, blah. You know, don't, I don't try to make them feel like idiots. But on the streets, however, <laughs> man, I love it. You, you can just have so much fun with it. Like, there was a game that our street performers used to play with each other. So we'd go and perform. And the way that street performing works is there's a pitch, and this is a spot where everyone works. You build your crowd, and there's a, a queue of people waiting. And we'd play games where, like, one of them would heckle you. <laughs> but like, And, like, you've never been heckled That's until brilliant. you've been heckled by a performer. And you'll be, like, middle of the show, like, I'll deliver this joke, and maybe the joke doesn't quite land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. someone would like throw a phone book into the crowd and it would land like in front of me and then they'd be like read it it's got better material than you wow that's awesome <laughs> they would just do stupid stuff like this heckling but, each other but because of it you end up developing some seriously thick skin so it's very hard for me to ever feel challenged i guess by mm -hmm, a spectator mm -hmm. there are some obviously but for the most part they'll say something dumb like like what i said to you like when does the magic start Whenever you want it to. <laughs> Whenever you stop drinking, sir. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like there's a whole bunch of things. Like, But there are some, uh, like I, on the streets, you get some aggressive, aggressive hecklers. Tell us that. Like, that's I've, the juice. Yeah, I once had a, a show <laughs> where this, uh, I don't want to say that religion is bad. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to say. We probably that. shouldn't say anything about but, it at all. <laughs> but in, in this particular instance, this person might have been taking an aggressive approach to religion. Okay. And they took it as they came into my show, and they basically were calling me like a heathen, like I was sent by Satan to trick these people, right? Which is, I don't think, a good representation of religion, mm. right? Yeah. Anyway, and, and that's so, a one-off. Yeah. And so he was doing this like an absolute madman to the point where he got physically aggressive, and like staunched up to me in the middle of my show. And I was like, I don't know. I have no idea what to do right now. I was quite confused. Damn. And so the only thing I could think of was I got my water bottle. <laughs> and I started flicking water on. It's like, get out of here. Get out of here, man. <laughs> all right. For all you uh, performers out there, just have a, a, a squirt gun ready and just wet people. Because well, you know, he was you. being like super aggressive. True, and, I was like, true. and I just had the water. Like, I was like, do? get out of here. Away with you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you know what the funny thing was? It worked. Because that person didn't know what to do. They were like, what is happening right now? Huh. And now here's a good one for you. When uh, Better be good. <laughs> we were just talking about mentalism. We were talking about Darren Brown. Mm. And Darren Brown once completed his show. And he was on his way home wearing his like crispy suit, looking like a rich you know, English boy. right? And he's going along and this guy was drunk and was like trying to arc up to him. And his response to that guy, so the guy's like, what are you looking at? I'm going to smash you, you know, really angry. And his response to that guy was, the walls outside of my house are only four feet tall. And the guy's like, what? <laughs> and it was enough to throw his train of thought off Just that he wasn't confusion. angry anymore. He was like, what? He's like, yeah, seriously, the guy told me they were five foot, but they're only four foot. It's funny because in America, the walls are really tall, but here they're quite low. <laughs> <laughs> And just that, throw some confusion at him but confusion that's a, bomb that was that's almost the same principle as me just randomly flicking the water because the guys are like oh you're a devil and then i'm like ah well, get away <laughs> and he's like what <laughs> that's you... interesting yeah. what about our friend joel fenton great great street performer we mentioned him before he told me that it's it's mandatory for him to get punched in the face at least once every two years street performing wow and he's been punched in the face at least twice and he told me one of the times was because he was performing and he says a joke in his show. He makes a joke about a dead kid. Oh, no. You, do you know that joke? He's like, he basically gets a kid to help him and he's like, don't worry, you'll be fine. 
Just yeah. do it like the last person did, and they say, you know, that person is they they didn't fall over. Yeah, you can stand here on the blood stains of yesterday's volunteer. Yeah, he yes, make, he like makes that. a joke about apparently, you know, he makes a bad joke about a kid helping him in the last show. Now that kid's dead, and then uh, yeah, a drunk guy came up to him and said, "You can't say that about a kid." Boom, clocked him right in the face, and it was like late at night when he was busking in yeah. in South Bank, and then he's also had like a drug addict come up and steal like his um his blade that he juggles with and then run off and like that's some crazy shit that that uh you know gives you such a thick skin i imagine yeah i mean you get those sorts of things as well busking i've had fisty cuffs definitely in the middle of a show that yeah. was, that was funny wow. i don't even know exactly what happened so one of the ones that i do recall vividly was i was doing street performing and i was making some money and this homeless guy just came out of nowhere and said what are you doing here you're not even homeless that was his approach like it like i don't belong there because i'm not homeless wow and i was like yeah i'm just doing some shows you know just you know entertaining some people and he goes yeah but you're taking all the money so now I can't. that's what his that's his thought was that i was like out there street performing and stealing all the money and that's why he's homeless <laughs> right. it's your fault yeah it's my fault anyway i just ignored him i ignored him and i start doing this show and then he comes back with like two other homeless guys <laughs> like a little gang of homeless oh, people no. right wow it was so weird too because then they've got that shitty dollar slushy i don't know what it is with homeless people and like slushies but they all have them in in brisbane at least okay anyway cheap he and they throws this slushy at me like full like poof, it explodes all over me and you know what? I didn't even give him the time of day. I let it explode all over me and I just kept moving on with the show. I just completely ignored him. And I finished the show, made the money, and quickly put it away. <laughs> and then these three homeless guys approach me and it just breaks out into a fight right there on the street. Like they fought each other. No, they fight me. Oh, they fought you? Yeah, they fought me. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. Who would like to see Jason Granted Mayer the <laughs> busking with some fisticuffs at the end of the show? <laughs> That's a show that people want to see. <laughs> But the public came to my aid because they had just watched me do a show and they know mm. that I'm not a bad fella. So they jumped in and helped. <laughs> but it was just so crazy so that this happened because he thought I was somehow the money. reason he's homeless is because I'm doing magic on the streets. So to encourage people to start street busking, don't worry. The worst thing that could happen is your audience will fire you. Dude, don't even worry about it. Just get out there and do it. It's a safe, uh, safe thing to do. <laughs> Holy crap. I can tell you that this, this sort of stuff is so few and far between that it's like, it's, it's not even really, like, I can't even really remember them that much. That's you because know? you got king punched that one time. That's that, why you that don't was, remember. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. I don't think you've told that story in a p podcast episode that we've actually kept. Do you want me to tell it on Christmas? No, let's not. <laughs> let's, let's save that. It's a, it's a joyous we'll time. It, you know, something interesting for next time. You know what goes through most magicians' mind at Christmas? Tell me. Is what the hell am I going to do for work in January? No, no, no. Sorry. Let, you know what goes through most corporate magicians' minds? Yeah. What the hell am I going to do for work That's in January? That's what I'm talking about. The but real you know magicians. what happens with uh, street performers? January is a golden time. It's really good for us. School holidays. Everyone's happy. They've just had presents given to them. They're feeling good great good time must but be nice february <laughs> february <laughs> february is the worst time for kids go worse. back to school it's everyone just when everyone out. goes back to work and school and they're a little bit cranky because they have to do it yeah 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 and that's that's when the street magicians are like oh, oh, i hate february <laughs> for the longest time growing up during november and december as a magician doing gigs you make so much more money in those months compared to the other months you're like on top of the world you're like this is great I really am glad with my career choices. Riding that high. I feel like I've made the right choice. And then it gets to January and you're like, oh my God, I have no work. And you quickly burn through the money you'd made because you're an idiot and you didn't save any of it <laughs> knowing that you would stop getting work. And then it always takes until like March to really kick into gear. And every time I would hear people posting on socials and I would feel the same way in my younger years. And you're like, what am I doing with my life? You know, <laughs> I should quit. And then all of a sudden it kicks back into gear. And anyway, it's like this cycle that this deja vu that would happen. Um, no, that happens. That happens with us too. Okay, good. It's, it's I'm glad January, it's everyone. It's the February zone. The yeah. February zone. That's the life of, you know, performing where it, nothing is guaranteed. Um, I mean, you have to love the lifestyle though. To be, to be able to be successful, you have to love the lifestyle. hundred percent. And one of the things that comes with it is just this fact that some of it is seasonal. So I have learned now that 
when I am doing this surplus of, of events, November and December, is I actually save... I save such a good portion of it so that I can just disperse it to myself <laughs> in January and February as if I'm like paying myself so I don't feel that that um, that uh, hole. But also I think, and everyone should be thinking of it now if you're a performer, like what are you going to do with your time in January and February when normal work isn't happening? Now, Zoom shows are a new thing in the world, so that could be a thing is starting to do Zoom shows perhaps. Um I like the idea of doing my own public shows because now I've got more time yeah. to put on events rather than getting booked to go to events. And the other and the other option, which I've done as well, is to run workshops. So in January, school holidays are still running. So in the past, I have ran card workshops, teaching just introductory kind of magic. And um, putting on these kind of things is something you have to think about already i mean you're watching this now it's a week to christmas you're screwed already but <laughs> but i mean you know for the the following year that's something that as performers you know you always have to be thinking ahead like if you want to do a show in six months time you actually have to start putting it into action three months beforehand you know you know the other crazy thing about being a performer is what's your retirement plan look like oh we don't talk about that yeah because it's like I mean, you can pay to your own Let's, super and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's Let's so, talk about it. It's so crazy to think about, like, with anyone else, like, you finish your job and they've paid your super for you and stuff like that. With us, we reinvest so much into our work mm. that I put stuff in my super, but I don't put much. I don't yeah. put as much as I probably should. Totally. Performing artists don't think like that, yeah. actually, right? We just think we want to perform. I mean... The other thing is, as well, though, is, like, how do you want... Like, so me, like we're doing this podcast now, right? Mm. I'm doing the YouTube stuff. I'm on the TikTok thing, doing all of that sort of stuff. Because in my mind, there's something to gain from being more than just doing your gigs, right? Yeah, there's a future and, that's building up from doing this exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. And there's every possibility that like maybe, I mean, like it's you know, completely up in the air. We don't know. But there's every possibility that maybe I don't, I never have to do a gig again. Because maybe I've produced enough content or done something so well that it just generates its own... Yeah, its own passive income. Yeah, exactly. And that would be uh, amazing. Yeah, like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of retirement plan that we think about is how do we build something up to where we can fully fund ourselves when, we're, when we retire. Not that magicians ever retire. Like oh, no one, keep going. Like I remember watching a great podcast interviewing David Copperfield and they asked him, you know, they actually asked him and I, it's the first time I've seen someone publicly ask him like, what, when will you retire or how much longer will you keep doing your show? And he was actually quite taken back from that. He was like, not annoyed, but he looked at him and said, you know, why do people retire from a job? And they and the answer is like they retire because they don't like that job. Yeah. So he's like, why would ever why would I ever want to stop doing my dream job? You know? <laughs> so his Good plan answer. Yeah, his plan is to never stop. And why, you know, why would you? So have that Tommy Cooper finish. Yeah, to die on stage. <laughs> Can't get any better. There's another, if we're there's another one, uh, you know, Red Skeleton. No. You know Tom Mullica? Yes. So t there's there's also one where Tom Mullica like um, passed out on stage. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah, no, I haven't story? seen it. I haven't seen it. Uh, so he was doing this. Uh, he was doing a show where he was playing the part of the, his idol back in the day. So his idol was this guy called Red Skellington. Um, he was a, oh a yeah, I've he yeah. heard of him talking about it. And yep. in order to do it, he had to have his ears like taped back because he really yeah, wanted. It was yeah, like yeah, a yeah. tribute show. He had to have his ears taped back. But is, it was, he, uh, is Red Skellington a, like a clown? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And he does like this tribute show for him, and then the pain was so immense on his on his uh, from, from like shaping his head to be like Red Skellington that he passed out on stage. And apparently, yeah, apparently the same thing as Tommy Cooper. People just laughed for five minutes wow. until it got weird, and then they're like, "Okay, so, something's not right." <laughs> That's great. Like this podcast is so much fun for us to do. I can't see why we wouldn't still be doing this when we're old. Like old, you know, whatever right, dude, that imagine, old is. Imagine this, right? We start at the ages of, how old are you again? 31. Damn, you're getting Maybe. old, boy. Yeah. We start at the ages of 29 and 31, and then sure enough, there we are at 69 and 71. Yeah. Doing well, the, even uh, 80, like, maybe you have other priorities when you're 80, like being able to still tie your shoes up. <laughs> But I can't see why we would stop doing this, you know? Like, this is so easy on the body to, to do. 
as long as you still have things to say. Yeah. Um, I don't know why we would retire from this, but it's definitely an important thing that, because certainly there are cases, so many cases of magicians, not ma- performers in general, you know, getting old and then eventually it gets to a point where they can't, they, people just don't want to book someone, you know, that, that should be retired now. And then, then what do you do? You have nothing because you've, you know, been living that traveling touring lifestyle. You so just do the Gazo thing and become the best street performer in the world. Keep doing hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, but you know, if you're Santa, Santa lives forever. He always has a job, dude. Yeah, dude. Santa might be the best magician in the world. Yeah, you ever seen a fat guy go down a thin chimney? Yeah, not well. That's right. Yeah, I do that every day. So, what are you doing for yourself? <laughs> Chin ups. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going. You're going to the gym. Yeah. You know what would be really interesting is by next year's Christmas podcast, like looking at the footage of you are having been going to the gym for a year. Yeah, you watch this. I'm going to look To now, we we'll look crazy. Like, we'll cut this you know clip. What, you know what I'm we'll... going to do? I'm going to do it. Ready? Look. This is me. This is me on the Christmas time of 2020. And now... Oh, this is going to be good. You yeah. guys got to wait a year. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good, I promise. That'd be freaking awesome, right? Damn. <laughs> Look, I really hope you guys have a great Christmas and, and get everything you would hope for and get to and see all your... And a happy New Year. And see all your loved ones. Well, I think New Year's is next week. And a happy Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and happy Christmas. <laughs> but no, guys, we really appreciate you guys stopping in and having a listen. Oh, you're going to end the podcast. You're going to end it. I was just kidding. No, I was just setting you up for Oh, that. okay. You were just, you were just joshing me. You were just joshing me. Let me look at our run time here. 43 minutes, but I know for a good portion of that, we were uh, changing our camera battery. I don't want to, you know, let any trade secrets go, but our camera battery ran out. Did you even notice? They noticed. I don't think that... Oh, okay, maybe they're not. If you're now, watching anyway, look, YouTube, enough, enough you rambling, noticed. enough rambling. There's something else that we need to discuss, and that is, should Josh become a part of the Naked Magicians? Yo, guys, thanks so much for watching this. We hope you have a great Christmas, a great Christmas. And remember, send us your questions or what you're up to. Tell us something about yourself. Keep it to a, at a minute maximum. Email that to us, themagicguysshow at gmail.com. We're going to start inserting your snippets so we can have a real conversation. Although, I think although be please, fun. please don't send questions like what is your favorite slight, you know, stuff like this. It needs to be something that we can actually talk with you about. Maybe like, yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah, ask yeah. us questions like, uh, how would you go about performing uh, to strangers or something like this? You know, like just something that we can actually help you with. Cause I, I don't really want to sit here and be like, well, my favorite slide is known as a DPS. 100%. And that's it. That's it. That's all we can say. hundred <laughs> percent. Or it can even just be you telling us what you're doing today. It could literally be, hi, I'm Josh from Brisbane. And today I'm about to listen to your podcast, but I'm driving to pick up my son because he has a pet goat that he's looking after at a farm. And, you know, tell us about yourself, where you're from. And where the that's hell did this good. kid get a goat from? I know. That guy is doing well in life. If you have a pet goat, you're fancy. You have a pet horse. I, well, yeah, I do have a horse. You have two? Just one. Just one. Oh, that's not cool then. Yeah, it's my girlfriend's horse and she has started up a business, you know, right around this, this horse. So it's pretty cool. But I wonder if we could decorate the horse to look like a reindeer and use that at my gigs. Would that increase my fee? Could no. I increase my fee with that? If, what, if you brought a live horse? Yeah, look like, looking like a reindeer. Like if I arrived it might, to it the might, gig. It might, at, you know, riding the horse? Yeah. If you rode in on, to, like, yeah. Like, as in, like, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Josh Norbido. No! <laughs> yeah. And you're like, hey guys, what's up? I'm Josh Norbido, and this is Friday. And then I hold up a cloth, bring it down, and the horse is gone. Anyway, enough speculation. Let's make it happen. Dude, that would be great. It's not going to happen. No, it's probably not going to happen. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This is Eric LeClaire reminding you. Eric LeClaire gets so many shout outs on our podcast. Yeah, I like Eric LeClaire. He's good Have man. a great Christmas. We're going to see you next week for the New Year Week special. And until then, stay magical. Stay frosty. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening. It's time for us to disappear now. Disappear now. But we'll see you again on the next episode of The Magic Guys.